Hello everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here, and I want to talk about blowing up planets, specifically how it's handled in Star Wars and how it's used as a plot point across the Star Wars saga. Blowing up planets is pointless, and not nearly as significant an achievement as it seems to be in the Star Wars saga, at least not in terms of being strategically useful. Now, I largely raise this point because, of course, the Rise of Skywalker introduces a fleet of hundreds of Star Destroyers of a new class that looks like the old Imperial One class, but is actually bigger and it's very, very stupid, and maybe I'll do a separate video about that. But the point is, each one of them has a super laser which can blow up a planet, and we see this happen in the film meaning the ability to destroy planets has been compartmentalized all the way down to something that just fits on a Star Destroyer rather than being this giant planet-sized weapon that used to be that required endless mining of kyber crystals and all of this other nonsense. Now it can be done very, very easily, apparently, with, with one ship. This is one of a million silly logistics problems in that film and poorly handled technology creep in the sequel trilogy, but the plan that it's a part of is problematic in of itself. It's stated that Palpatine wants a ship for each important planet in the galaxy so that he can threaten each of them with destruction, presumably to subjugate everybody under threat of having their planet exploded. It's not made clear why he can't just use half as many ships and have them each go to multiple planets because they can all move around, since he seemed to think that he would be able to institute a state of total fear with only one Death Star, so why he needs a massive fleet like this, we don't know. But more importantly, there's no reason why the people of the galaxy should be more afraid of having their planet blown up by a super laser than they would be of having it rendered uninhabitable by normal starships, as has always been a possibility. We see in Knights of the Old Republic, set thousands of years before the events of the Star Wars saga, that a planet, in the case of Taris, can be rendered uninhabitable by turbo laser bombardment from space. It might take a few days, but it's certainly doable, and if you've got a rudimentary understanding of physics, you will know that all you really need to render a planet uninhabitable is a bit of speed and a big rock, or basically anything else that you can just give a substantial amount of momentum and fling at a planet. Planets are not these incredibly tough fortresses that require incredible amounts of technology and innovation to crack. They're quite vulnerable things. I mean, you only need to ask the dinosaurs how much protection the Earth gave them from big rocks falling from space. Basically, any power in Star Wars that has the capacity for normal interplanetary and interstellar spaceflight can pose a massive lethal threat to a planet and is more than capable of rendering it completely uninhabitable, and that alone should be enough to institute a state of fear across the galaxy. Anyone who has ships that can just go there and do that at any time puts people under that threat. Completely blowing up a planet entirely is a significant technological jump from just rendering it uninhabitable, but it's a technological jump that offers essentially no reward, because all you get back from the massive amount of effort of building a planet-destroying laser is that you're now capable of not only killing all of your enemies on this planet, but also blowing up the blackened ball of rock that you could otherwise have built things on or strip mined. You're essentially just destroying exploitable resources you could otherwise have used. When you could have delivered the same political message of fear and killed the same planetary population using only a couple of Star Destroyers at an incredibly cheaper cost. Planetary bombardment by warship is also a thing that you could do to a limited degree in order to suppress rebellion and then stop doing before you've inflicted too much damage on your own planet. It's worth pointing out that in the case of the Galactic Empire, they were all their planets. The Empire controlled the galaxy. When they blew up Alderaan, yes, it was definitely a planet that had a lot of rebellious instinct and a lot of people interested in supporting rebellions against the Empire, but it was a core planet of the Galactic Empire that presumably paid a lot of taxes and built a lot of ships and mined a lot of stuff that they needed. It seems very unlikely that losing an entire planet's worth of resources was worth sending the message that the Empire will not tolerate rebellion. And in fact, the ultimate result was that it galvanized far more supporters to the rebellion against the Empire. Now this brings me to a point where I'm going to say something positive about Starkiller Base, perhaps the only positive thing about that ridiculously stupid plot device, and that is that it actually makes more sense for the First Order to want to build a super weapon than it did for the Empire. Because in the case of Starkiller Base, pouring all of their resources into that and getting that built put them in a position where they could essentially force the New Republic to capitulate to a far inferior force. If you cast your minds back to when The Force Awakens came out, before all of this nonsense about the First Order taking over the entire galaxy in the time it took Rey to walk up a small hill, as told by the opening crawl, back in the day, we were actually under the impression that the First Order was quite a small, high-tech enclave that had to use innovation and tactics to get what it wanted. And in that case, pouring all of their resources into a big super laser that would allow them to hold the entire galaxy at ransom and get them to surrender out of fear of being blown up was a very clever way for an extremely small political power to take over the entire galaxy. And I kind of wish The Last Jedi had gone out of its way to say 
that the, maybe the rest of the galaxy still thought Starkiller Base was intact, and that's why they surrendered. But yes, that is the one instance in which I will forgive planetary destruction by means of Big Death Ray, because in Starkiller Base's case, it could be done from extremely far away. The First Order presumably didn't actually have the fleets or resources to get into close range and bomb planets into submission, and it was a clever way to even the scales and force people to surrender. I just wish that it had actually been used this way in the story. But the rest of the time... There's no reason why you would ever want to blow up a big ball of exploitable resources when you could just fling some asteroids at it and wipe out its population or fire turbo lasers at it for a few days until it surrenders. But I'd like to finish this off by saying I'm completely fed up with super weapons as a plot device in basically anything. It's just lazy and uninteresting and in the case of The Rise of Skywalker it was manifestly unnecessary. In this film we've got Palpatine returning from the dead with an army of secret Sith cultists and he does a giant force storm where he blows up a load of warships by hand with force lightning. Were the stakes not high enough already? Was the return of this incredibly powerful Sith Lord with his giant fleet and the already present threat of the First Order not enough? And the only way the audience was really going to be invested is if there was a giant fleet of 150 planet-killing Star Destroyers ready to blow up all of those people of the galaxy that we've never seen or cared about in this entire sequel trilogy. It just strikes me as writers thinking that we're only going to care if the stakes are always at the maximum if the scale is always comically out of proportion and it seems like it's kind of underestimating the audience to be honest. I have to assume that the average moviegoer can appreciate that the First Order gaining three times as many ships as they previously had and also having a resurrected all-powerful Sith Lord leading them would have been enough of a game changer to set the stakes for this final story without them also being able to just effortlessly blow up planets. So there's my point. Blowing up planets is not strategically useful and in fact damages your chances of getting any kind of useful resources out of a solar system. It doesn't work as a weapon of fear because they shouldn't be any more afraid than they previously were of having their planet bombed with asteroids or pelted with turbo laser rounds or otherwise screwed over from space. And it doesn't work as a plot device because it just throws the power creep out of whack, makes every antagonist seem like a moustache twirling Bond villain, and implies that the audience will lose interest if anything other than the literal fate of the galaxy is at stake in any given Star Wars story. So no more planet-killing death rays, please. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Dock. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.